This is Dr. Stephen Kachikian from the Black Hills Regional Eye Institute in South Dakota, and today we have a DMAC preparation video. Uh, what we're doing here is we are preparing uh, Decimase membrane and the corneal endothelium for transplant uh, into another individual. For those of you who don't know, uh, Decimase membrane and the corneal endothelium are the uh, most interior uh, layers of the cornea and they are the layers that are most commonly transplanted. We begin the procedure uh, using a Y hook and we score the peripheral corneal endothelium and decimase membrane using that Y hook. It's a little bit out of the frame right now uh, but basically uh, what we do here is use the Y hook and one of the posts uh, from the uh, corneal chamber and we score that corneal endothelium uh, by pinning the cornea in between the post and the Y hook and uh, gently pulling. Now, it, right now we've got the Y hook kind of hung up in a little bit of stroma, but once you get the proper depth, uh, you can just kind of daisy chain around uh, the cornea, scoring that endothelium. You want to score it as peripheral as possible so you can get the largest. Uh, amount uh, of, of graft or largest size graft possible. Usually my grafts are about eight and a quarter millimeters. Once you have scored uh, the peripheral cornea about 360 degrees, uh, we then stain lightly with a tripan blue. And we stain with the tripan blue so you can see the area that you have scored and that you can also remove any peripheral or loose tissue. So here we are now staining gently with the tripan blue. We'll rinse that out and we'll take a look and you can see there the area that has been scored and you'll also be able to see any peripheral areas of loose tissue. The next step is to remove any of those loose uh, flaps or tags of tissue. The reason for that is that they tend to get in the way when you're trying to uh, complete the rest of the prep. It becomes very hard to tell uh, what's peripheral tissue, uh, what's more proximal tissue, and so you want to get any of those tags that you see, you want to remove them uh, so that they don't uh, kind of confuse you during the, the remainder of the procedure here. So we'll get some of those tags of tissue out of the way and then we'll begin the next step in this procedure which is uh, 360 degrees kind of freeing up the edge of that uh, central corneal tissue. And so we'll get rid of all these tags here as much as possible. And then we'll use a Sinsky hook. There you go, that was a long strip. We use a Sinsky hook to free up the edge. This technique, by the way, is a technique uh, really that I learned uh, from uh, Dr. Frank Price in Indiana. Uh, along with um, his associate Matt, Matt Fang, um, they did an excellent job, oh, probably about four or five years ago, uh, of to, to, at least that's when I took the course, uh, developing uh, this technique. And it's one that I continue to use uh, for all my uh, DMEC patients. You can get some of this tissue that's been uh, prepared by the eye bank but I tend to prep most of my tissue uh, myself because I think there's, in general, uh, less manipulation and less uh, damage in transport, uh, so to speak. And so I feel like I get uh, some very healthy tissue and I'm aware of uh, any excess manipulation or any damage that might have occurred during the preparation process because I've done it myself. Here what we're doing is using a Sinsky hook to free up the peripheral edge of the cornea. And the reason we do this is because when we start to peel the graft, uh, we won't want uh, any of the edges uh, getting pinned down that might cause a, a rip or a tear in the graft as it's being peeled. So we're going to go 360 degrees and free up all those edges. You can kind of see that there, how the edge just comes down just slightly. 
so that it, that it's not stuck to the periphery. If there is an area that's difficult to, to free up and something that looks kind of stuck, then you can avoid that area when you are doing uh, your final uh, graph preparation. And there's a, another little tag there that I removed so that it's not in the way. Once all the areas have been uh, freed 360 degrees, you grab an edge just like we have here and you begin to just gently pull that edge. Okay, Now this edge is peeling very nicely. In about two peels we're going to peel 50% or, or more of the graft. We don't ever peel it completely right away. Uh, we just peel it in part. And one of the factors that goes into um, how easily Decimase membrane detaches uh, from the kind of the main cornea is the age of the donor. And so usually when I prep my own tissue, I ask for donors that are uh, 65 or older and who are non-diabetic. Uh, you don't always get that, um, but that tends to be what I try and request to uh, maximize the ability to peel the donor. Now I've peeled donors as young as uh, 50, but they tend to um, have better adhesion, and so the, the peeling of the donor tissue is much more delicate. And then when you go to unscroll the tissue in the eye, uh, it's much more difficult to unscroll. Now here we put the cornea on the tree fine, and you'll notice the tree fine has a purple kind of uh, ring in the center. That's that 8.25 millimeter uh, mark. I pre-inked that, uh, so I'll know exactly where 8.25 millimeters is, and that there are any areas uh, of damaged cornea uh, from the peeling process. I will keep those out of that trepanation area. Now we're just gently uh, doing the trepanation. And one thing you will find is if you do enough of these, you'll the, the trepanation or the, the tree find will embed itself into the cornea and you'll lift up and the entire cornea will be gone because it's stuck in the blade. And that's really not a problem. It, it's just a little bit annoying. Um, but what you try and do is gently uh, free up the cornea and decimase membrane uh, from the blade of the tree find about 360 degrees, just kind of going in there and tapping the cornea off of the blade. And then if you do that, you'll find that when you lift the blade out, the cornea uh, remains. And so right now what I'm doing is just trying to free up the cornea from the blade uh, of the tree fine here. And we'll gently separate it and see if that cornea actually sticks um, to the surface rather than to the blade. So there's the cornea and it's been uh, trepanated. One thing I do like about marking uh, with the, the gentian by the marking pen is that it does allow you to see uh, that 360 degree edge very well. There is a slight concern that uh, the gentian violet can damage the corneal endothelium and cause some corneal endothelial cell death, but I, I do think that's minimal, especially because I am doing my own uh, tissue preparation. And so, in general, the amount of tissue manipulation is fairly low. And so, if there is any uh, cell death from the gentian by a marking pen, I think it's fairly, fairly minimal. What I'm doing here now is just trying to find the, the edge of that graft again, and we'll just gently peel the graft off. It comes very easily. I do find that after the trepanation, the graft peels much more easily. Now we'll stain our graft with Tripan Blue. So we've got that tissue there. It's been freed from the posterior portion of the donor cornea. And we're going to stain for about 60 seconds with Tripan Blue. I am of the opinion that uh, excessive tripan blue dye or excessive exposure to tripan blue dye can cause damage to the corneal endothelium. I do find that when doing cataract surgery, if I place tripan blue in the eye and I don't place it under vis viscoelastic or at least under an air bubble, that the following day, postoperatively, the patients do have a lot more corneal edema. So in general, uh, in all my surgery cases, I do try and minimize a direct exposure of the tripan blue 
to the corneal endothelium. For the transplants, you do need to visualize the tissue though, and so you need some tripan blue staining. Uh, once the 60 seconds of staining are up, I use a sponge to remove some of the tripan blue, find the edge uh, of the corneal scroll there, and lift it out of the tripan blue, and place it in the optosol medium. I typically prep my tissue right before the case, although I have done it um, as much as 24 to 36 hours prior to the case and leave it in the optosol. There you can see that scroll in the optosol here. And if you switch over to the DMEC surgical video, you can see the scroll being placed in the eye and unscrolled inside the eye for the corneal transplant. Thanks so much.